because being gay was in your plan. I mean, I to not, be gay? not because, um, and not plan. <laughs> um, so none of those words. Um, last time we talked, we talked about the process of self-realization and coming out to yourself. Right. I wanted to talk a little bit more this time about the process of coming out to other people. I think okay. that you told the story of coming out to the first person, which happened to be me, which I honestly and your, didn't. And your lovely wife. And my Lynn. lovely wife, which I really didn't realize. Um, I think we might have sort of hinted at talking to coworkers, but we didn't actually go sure. through the process there. So right after you came out to me and my wife, right, was it more real after that? Did you have did you have a plan in place already to talk to different people and if so what was your plan? Oh goodness, no, I I didn't really have a a plan, I guess. I mean, at, at the point when I talked with you and Lynn, I didn't really there's no grand plan even among from one trans person to the next as far as what what exactly people do. Okay. So I um and you know this because you researched it. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I, I researched it, but also, I mean, even if you take into account that some people start earlier than others, mm -hmm. for example, and so even that affects things as far as people who are in college versus people who are midway through careers or sure. that kind of thing. Okay. So in my case, I had talked to you and Lynn, and I figured at the least I wanted our group of friends to know. Did you think that it might be okay for the rest of your life if only your close friends knew? Or did you want them to know before everybody else? Well, so that gets to the reason, well, the reason at the time, at first, why I was talking to people, and that was just part of it, to get feedback on, on their thoughts and just what they thought as far as avenues I might try and things like that and so it was as much about being authentic to myself at, in in the respect of being me to my friends but also in some ways uh, leaning upon my friends to figure out what my next steps might be to try to figure that out okay so I had I had no grand plan I mean, most but you were of this, kind of hoping that it might get easier with each person that you told, because you would well, be able to use their reaction to better inform your your next attempt. Am I understanding that right? Well, I I knew from uh, I mean, there's a a good transgender community online forums and the like and mm -hmm. so on, and so. I knew that for basically everyone, it gets easier the more people you tell, the more people you come out to. And part of it being just that before you come out to someone, you're worried about, oh, how are they going to react and so on. But after you come out to a few people, you kind of realize, hey, most people are okay with this. And so that lessens some of the anxiety. And then on, on top of that, while I by no means had a memorized spiel or anything, I had a, a muscle memory of sorts by the third or fourth or fifth person I've come out to just since there were certain, for lack of a better word, bullet points to cover. Mm -hmm. And and so because my brain knew those aspects very well, I didn't have to worry, for example, about forgetting what to say or whatever. Of course, I would still be concerned about how people might react and that kind of thing. But for the most part, um, I mean, it did get easier. Okay. And is it a little bit like somebody who gives presentations to large companies for a living traveling around the country? And the big difference being that you didn't have notes to start from. So you, you never really wandered around the house practicing it by yourself. Yeah. Or, or like, um, someone, participating in a in a play for example that 
there might be those opening night jitters and even at, on to later showings it might not be an easy thing but it gets easier okay and i mean so at, at this point it is quite easy for me to come out to people i've that's good i mean I, i've come out to my pharmacist for example or just so for example if i wanted to become a stand-up comedian there'd be a huge gap between actually going to an open mic and doing comedy and saying yes to somebody who asked, hey, are you a stand-up comedian? Right. Because you wouldn't consider yourself one when you're comparing yourself to people you look up to. Sure. Was there anything like that for you? Did it, or were you... Did I have people to look up to? No, Or no. am I misunderstanding? Um, Did it not feel like I was really coming out to people? Tell me, tell me what dysphoria is. Okay. So, gender dysphoria is related to persons who are transgender but it's not necessarily a one-to-one ratio it's uh okay it's a feeling of not fitting in with one's gender that's probably the simplest explanation but more specifically it's i mean part of what i struggle with is how to describe the emotions and feelings of of gender dysphoria to someone who's never experienced it oh, but yeah it would be like if you've just moved to a new town and you're going to your first day of school but maybe it's february or march by that point so everyone in the class is already good buddies with each other okay and you walk in the first day and no one knows who you are and it's not that they dislike you but you feel like you don't fit in at all you feel sense of outsidership or not belonging okay Mi- mixed in with there is anxiety or sometimes a sense of loneliness it's mm-hmm. it's it's a uh, it's something that for people who are transgender is often present much of the time but there are certain experiences which can exacerbate it and so on because you were telling me the other day that you were watching a Lady Gaga video and it was triggering your dysphoria severely. Yes, I severely. thought at the time that that it meant that you were having conflicting feelings on the inside about, oh, maybe I am still a man. No, but it's not it that was. At all. Okay. It happened to be her poker face video, mm. but it is a very feminine video. Okay. And as by way of another analogy, a feeling of dysphoria is as if you are extremely thirsty. Maybe you've not had a drink all day Mm -hmm. and there's a bottle of cold water that's just outside your reach. Mm. Mm. So it's a mixture of almost being there, but not being there of, of being, um, close and yet far away of frustration when you were telling person two and person three and person four and person five and person six did your dysphoria lessen at all with each person that you came out to did you feel more like you had made the right decision you mean the the decision of whether i should come out to my friends that the decision that you should have been born a girl Oh, right. The conclusion that you should have been born again. Yeah. No, I mean, talking to my friends didn't really change my opinion on that matter terribly. And my dysphoria, it, it's very much in, environmentally driven in many ways. So talking to my friends neither raised or decreased my dysphoria for the most part. At a high level, how did you decide who to come out to on a case-by-case basis? I had some strategy in mind i mean i want i knew that i wanted to come out to all my friends in the area and then i would go from there i mean some of the things were things like if i was going to come out to more than one person such as at lunch or dinner or something i wanted it to be a scenario where i hadn't come out to some but not others because i didn't want the people i had already come out to to feel awkward as I was coming out to the other people. Additionally, I 
made sure that I would tell couples at the same time,、mm. so that one wouldn't feel either the need to have to tell the other or to withhold from the other about me. Yeah, in my experience, when people are in a committed relationship, is a common understanding that they they don't keep secrets from each other about their friends, and that's fine. Yeah, and that's absolutely fine. But I didn't know if there would be a burden on someone to feel the need to recount my、okay. coming out、sure. in any kind of specificity. So, did you think maybe that one of them might get it wrong when we're lying to the other? Not terribly. I、okay. mean, it wasn't so much that I was worried, but I don't know if other people、yeah. would would feel anxious about doing that. So, in your head, did you have overlapping or expanding circles of very close friends, close friends? Sort of close friends, acquaintances.、Uh, did you、um, work outward or? The the great part about my friends in here in Dallas is that I'm really good friends with all of them. So, in that sense, it was a matter of who I happened to be having dinner with at what times, or if I was. Okay, so you didn't have to schedule play dates, as it were. No. I didn't want to make things any more weird than they would be by、sure. having the "I need to talk to you" kind of thing because、uh-huh. that can seem more ominous than it is. Yeah, and so, I mean, I've never timed it, but it it might take ten, fifteen minutes or something, depending on what questions people have or so on. And so, I I I thought it best to kind of work it into other activities rather than try to make it its own、okay. sort of thing. Since you're close friends with just about everybody that you consider a friend in Dallas, and、sure. you couldn't tell them all at once,、mm-hmm. did you think, well, I'm going to tell this one particular person, and she's a blabbermouth? Pardon me for assuming it's a woman, and、uh, then everybody's already going to know. Or did you tell people specifically? You don't don't feel obligated, or try not to tell other people because I'm doing this very methodically and carefully. Among my group of close friends. I trust them all very much, and、mm-hmm. so I. Oh yeah. And on top of that, they're all good people. They, they, they are polite enough that I knew they would not talk to other people about this. Okay. Just given the general etiquette of coming out and so on. I mean, in many ways, coming out as transgender is not exactly the same thing as coming out as gay or lesbian. But I mean, many of the same rules of etiquette, as it were.、Mm-hmm. Uh, apply as far as not necessarily telling other people unless someone says that's okay and so on. Now I'm not trying to get you to gossip or anything, but is it really that you had zero problems telling any of your close friends? None of them reacted in a strange way. Um, I mean, one of my friends is a mere blip. If anything, what he said to me at the time was that it was something he needed to get used to,、mm-hmm. and that. He didn't feel comfortable calling me Ashley right away, but、uh. that once once he did feel comfortable, that he would do so. Interesting. So it wasn't something that he、well, was opposed to, but not right away. Did anybody act with relief, like they'd been anticipating it? Um. No. Okay. I'm just wondering. I mean, I mean it. it Entirely possible that some people may have been anticipating, may have felt relief, but、mm-hmm. I think that you may or may not be able to speak to some of this. I mean, just since as the coming out with tea, <laughs> I I don't have as much experience in that regard. But my impression is that certainly at the beginning part of the coming outness or or whatever, that much of the adrenaline I feel or what have you is also felt by the other person. Perhaps in some ways, just since even if it was not an entire surprise, it's nonetheless、mm-hmm. a lot of news to take in at once. I think it has to be one of those moments where you won't forget where you were, or what you were doing, right? Especially since you're a close friend. I would I wouldn't say that it was a chest pounding moment, but right, yeah. Certainly, the world did get a little quieter. Sure. Yeah. 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 So, what was next after you told all your close friends how? Long did that take?、Uh, so I came out to you and Lynn in, I believe it was 
June or July of 2010. And then I continued coming out to other friends in August, September. And you didn't have a deadline you were trying to meet? No, not really. I mean, because I, there was nothing forcing my hand or, or what have you. Okay. I, I didn't drag it out. But at the same time... Well, I'm wondering if it was all prior to starting hormones or, I don't know, wearing skirts or other things that might make it uh, blatantly oh, right. obvious. If you wanted to start that at a certain point, you would want to have come out to everybody before that. Right, right. I would, probably. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that I, I did want to be able to be open with friends as far as my attire and, and that kind of thing. But... Even then, I was not. I was not out entirely. I mean, at, at work, I was not, for yeah. example. And so, because I already had a duality between work and home, a little extra duality with some friends temporarily was something that was okay. I I was able to get through, but but I mean, what what I ended up doing though is uh, in November of 2010 I sent out an email to my close friends in Dallas in which I this was I sent it to probably a couple dozen I suppose people that received it mm -hmm. some so of I, whom you'd already talked to in person right okay right but I also wanted to mention in that email for example that I would prefer female pronouns that's something which some people through no fault of their own may not um, realize yeah and I also at, at that time, asked them that I would like to be called Ashley since okay. at that point I hadn't decided on what my name would be. So, oh, really? Right. Ashley was a stopgap? Or still is, maybe? No, 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 oh, no. okay. But I, well, I had come out to people prior to this email, mm -hmm. but I hadn't yet picked out what my name would be. Oh, okay. So I could come out to them and tell them I'm transgender, but I couldn't ask them to call me such and such because that hadn't been determined yet. Since we're talking about it, how did you pick mm. that name? My birth name also, also starts with the letter A, and in part due to I, part of its transition, I, uh, or tradition, I should say, to pick a name that has uh, some letters in common. I guess some of it is just that Tradition might... among transgender people? Yes. Trans okay. Yes. I guess part of it being that it may make things, uh, may make it easier for your friends to remember your new name. And part of what's also convenient is that it also allows one to, if, if one is not out to some people, you can write your name as a, f a first letter followed by your last name. Ah, and that way, if, say, it's, uh, say, your Flickr page or what have you, where you may be out to some people but not out to others. They may just think you shortened your name. Yeah, or right. whatever they want to assume. So I had preferred to start with the letter A. And so it was sort of like a new parent. I went online, the equivalent of what would be a baby name books, mm -hmm. starting with the letter A. I'm just kind of looking through them. All right. And that was, obviously, there are probably dozens, if not hundreds of names that start with the letter A. Mm -hmm. And so I kept myself a, a text file of, I would just jot down names that I liked as I was going through some of the baby lists. And then, so that gave me sort of a, maybe a dozen or so. And then I went through those, and some of them... I liked, but for example, I had other friends who already had that name mm -hmm. and or other other close friends, I should say. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to pick that particular name because it could just be confusing in that regard. OK, that was very understanding. One of the things that I liked about Ashley is that it's a name that's usually for girls, but sometimes for guys and so as in the case of the evil dead sure in, in that respect it was a name that the name alone wouldn't necessarily out me if i was not passing completely at the time interesting 
Okay. So, for example, if I introduced myself to someone at the store or whatever and said, hi, I'm Ashley, and if that person didn't perceive me as a woman at the time, my name alone would not out me as transgender. Okay. And so that was part of it. And as you had unintentionally eluded, I <laughs> consciously was also a fan of Army of Darkness. Well, who isn't? It's not uncommon for people to ask me how I picked the name, and that's entirely fine. Yeah. At the same time, once I get to the part about Army of Darkness, some people feel the inclination to call me Ash, and I prefer not to be called Ash. So what happened after you had told all of your close friends? It got easier with every person you told. Right. And then right. you sent out the sort of blanket email just to make sure everybody knew the name and... And pronouns. And right. I also... Ground rules, <clears throat> as it were. Yeah, and what I had also done at the time in that in that email is send out some information on uh, HRT, hormone replacement therapy, mm. just so that my friends would know what kind of things to expect and or or not expect, as the case may be. Okay, I'm curious who you came out to afterward. Oh, sure, sure. So after that, I came out to some of my coworkers. Um, just on a piecemeal basis. Hmm. Um, one of the first coworkers to whom I came out, it was actually while she and I were getting pedicures. Oh, nice. Yeah. So. Did you just feel the time was right or was that person particularly important to come out to? Well, we were both having our nails painted. Yeah. And. As I may have mentioned on the last episode, I have had my nails painted at work since I started at the job, but... But the toenails were hidden. Well, at work, they were not hidden for long. Oh, I right. switched to sandals a month or two in. So at any rate, as far as uh, this coworker, she and I were having our nails done, and then as... At the conclusion of it, as we were waiting in the chairs to have just for our nails to dry so that we could, so that it would be dry enough so that we wouldn't chip them on to drive back to the office because we, we went over l a lunch break kind of thing. Sure. Um, I mentioned to her that I'm transgender. And so she actually was, was very supportive about it. And she, as is common with some people, wasn't as familiar with some of the details, but was mm -hmm. open to learning about it and so on. And had you invited yourself to go get a pedicure with her? I've had my nails painted every day at the job. Yeah. And several months into the job, I've also worn sandals, so they've seen my both my hands and toes painted. Okay. And so two women on the QA team, they would often... Or occasionally, I should say, uh, go for pedicures over lunch, if I recall. And I think it was one afternoon when they were just coming back from pedicures and showing their nails and so on, which, honestly, we're in a room full of developers, so they most people didn't really appreciate things much. But, uh, but mm. I did, I mean, because, okay. you know, they're pretty. So uh, I think I mentioned offhandedly something along the lines of, I'd be happy to go with you sometime if, if, if that would be all right. And they said, oh, sure, yeah. And they were, so, yeah. Did you, at that point, think that they thought about you, hey, that's our male developer friend who just has a thing with nails? Or did you think that they might suspect? Well, my hunch is that they thought, hey, that's our gay ma male developer friend. Ah, uh. And you because, were okay with that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, I can write code, and so the rest of it's just ancillary. <laughs> <laughs> like, nice. oh, you can write CSS and HTML and JavaScript. Okay, great. What you do in your own time is whatever. <laughs> sure. Well, I'm not... Not that there's anything wrong with being gay, of course. Right. Um, but it's not true about you, and that's why somebody might be uncomfortable with other people thinking something untrue about themselves. I mean, on the other hand, I mean, I am gay in the sense that I'm a lesbian. Okay. But 
Not in the way that they that you. Not in the way thought. that most people think I'm gay. Right. So um, they, I had, I had picked up on those signals that they had, some or many of my coworkers had thought I was gay, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with being gay, and so I didn't really care in the least. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So you would just tell your, you would come out to your coworkers one by one on a convenience basis. I mean, I, I really tried to think things through. Mm-hmm. So, for example. If I were to be coming out to someone over lunch, I would not want there to be some portion of people I've come out to and some portion I hadn't come out to. And as well, over the lunch hour, uh, 12, 1 o'clock, what have you, well, many people go to lunch. And so depending on which restaurant you go to and the acoustics of that restaurant, it may or may not be hard to hear each other talk. Right. And so... In the course of an ordinary lunchtime thing, that might be a mere inconvenience. But in my case, I did not want people to mishear what I was telling yeah. them. Yeah, okay. And so for these, this group of uh, four other developers, we went to a sort of a fish shack. And <laughs> they have... So they this is... I mean, it's a proper restaurant. They have seating right. indoors. Okay. And as well, they also have Because you guys several, don't have a lot of beach where you live. Right. Uh yeah. But yeah, so they also have uh, several picnic bench type seating mm-hmm. outdoors, and and often when the weather was nice enough, that's where we would go to sit. And so when these group of coworkers said, "Hey, we're going to uh, whatever the fish place is called," mm-hmm. I said, uh, and they said, "Shaco fish." Shaco fish. <laughs> Uh, they said, so do you want to come with us? And as they, I mean, they would just ask me anyway. And I said, oh, uh, yeah, sure, I'll go with you. I mean, some of this may be overthinking things, but I knew that by sitting outside, there wouldn't be the walls for the sound to reverberate mm-hmm. off of. And as well, that there would be, we wouldn't be crammed in. And so I could, I could talk to them freely without them being uncomfortable from other close tables over here and whatever. Mm. But and so, yeah, I, I told them and, um, and they were all entirely supportive about it. It's good news. Yeah. Yeah. While you were telling people one by one, mm-hmm. did you have any daydreams about how people might be discussing it with each other? I mean, in some sense, sure. Were but they bad? I, were they bad daydreams? Were they daymares? No, they, they were day rainbows or, <laughs> whatever you want to call it sure because i find with being transgender that when people tend to talk to each other about it assuming they're not assholes they generally dispel each other's misconceptions uh-huh. rather than compound them at least in my experience and so i i was kind of hoping that they would do that i mean for just off the top of my head, this is entirely speculation, but maybe one might say, uh, so what pronouns should I use? How does that work? Mm. And someone might say, oh, she would prefer female pronouns. And then, oh, okay. And then that kind of thing. So just since the coming out spiel or whatever you want to call it, mm. I mean, having not been on the other side of the table, as it were, I can't speak to it as much, but... I mean, there's a good bit of info that I'm going over, mm-hmm. and people, I don't know, maybe they miss some details or something. That's so. very possible. Yeah. Because yeah. you're, I don't want to say in shock, but yeah, you might just start to space out a little bit while yeah, the other or person it's, it's is a talking. Lot to take in. Even during a normal mundane conversation about dry cleaning, you might start right. to space out. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't hold that against people. But I mean, but after that point of the group of, I think it was four developers that I come out to, I generally had to resort to talking to people one-on-one in the conference room. And so when I would just send them instant message saying something along the lines of, whenever you have a moment, I'd like to just talk with you in the conference room for a little bit. Huh. Usually parentheses, this is the least urgent thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. just in the sense that I didn't want them to think it was about coding or work or something that. If they were in, if they were in the middle of something, they could, they could take the twenty minutes or whatever it was, and then once they're at the stopping point, mm. just have a little chat in the conference room. So, 
Did you ever try to do the lie to me technique of looking for micro expressions and suspect that people are hiding emotions they might, might be having, or do you just take people at their word? I generally take people at their word. And I mean, one thing I would do before coming out to people is not so much the micro expressions or what have you, but I would pay attention to people's just general chatter about things. So for example, going out to lunch with coworkers, some of my coworkers like to talk about politics. Okay. And even even though it's not an extremely political subject, occasionally maybe gay marriage would come up. Okay. And I've found uh, naturally gay marriage and transgender topics are not directly linked, but I found a correlation between if someone was in favor of gay marriage, I found I've I've learned that it's very likely that person would be supportive of me being transgender. So I what I what I would do before coming out to people is to try to pay attention to those types of cues in terms of just to get a feel for how people mm. uh may may react. Not only were you going to come out as transgender, but right. as a subset of that, you're coming out as a lesbian. Right. And ideally you'd like to be able to get married someday. That may or may not be true. I'm not sure I'm the marriage type. Oh, fair enough. But nonetheless, I, I support the rights of other Absolutely. people to get married. Is there a line that you didn't want to cross whereas your supervisors and managers were concerned or the boss of the company? I mean, as of this point, I mean, I'm on a team of 12 people and I've come out to nine of them so far. Okay. Indeed, my manager is one of the people that I've not come out to yet, uh. in part because he doesn't often talk about politics and so I've not been able to really get a read on him one way or the other. Is he in the office? He's Frequently? in the office. Because you have obvious breasts at this point. And I definitely want to spend a lot more time talking about body changes. For sure, sure. But this seems critical to not telling people that you see on a daily basis. What may not be evident to your male viewers is that Obviously, bras and breasts go hand in hand, as it were. Mostly. And bras make a big difference in uh -huh. giving one's boobs a shape. Hmm. That without a bra, for example, you kind of end up with sort of a uni boob sort of thing. And part of what I had been doing and continue to do at, at work is I, even under my t-shirts, I will wear a small sized undershirt which serves to compress my chest. Interesting. At least, I mean, it's not like a, a sports bra or anything like that, but it is snug enough that for people who are not looking for it, they typically are unaware. Interesting. I guess then you also haven't worn a skirt to work. No. No. I, I, am, I have not come out at work yet, so I, yeah. Speaking of skirts, is there anything fashionable or makeup be that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, sure. So, so I've got two jobbies here. One of which is called Smashbox Photo Finish. Smashbox. And, and this is, this is a primer, what they call. Is which, this the, the eyeshadow thing? Well, that was an eyeshadow primer, but this oh. is a general primer. Oh, okay. And so as you may be able to tell from this little tube, it's entirely clear. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's silicone-based, but essentially this can be applied just as a very small amount as an interim step uh, after one's moisturizer but before foundation. And what it can help to do is offer... A, a smoother appearance to one's skin, more of a consistent texture, for example. I thought that's what foundation was. Foundation does some of that, but foundation is, at least from my perspective, more of focusing on an even tone of color, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. So primer, then foundation, then makeup. 
No, is moisturizer, this... then primer. Okay, but moisturizer seeps in. I'm talking about stuff that s stays on the surface. Sure, yeah, yeah. Does this stuff clog up your pores, or what's... Is there no. any side effects I mean, effects there to worry are about? variants that are... There's a light version, which is, is thinner in texture, but either way, they're, they're designed not to clog up your pores, though. So you're using this every day? Yes. When I, since starting hormones, my, my skin has, I mean, I'm in my 30s now, so it's, it's generally been fine anyway, but mm -hmm. it's been generally less oily even than it had been. So I believe on a hormonal basis, cool. that may come into play. But as far as, I mean, as far as my day to day, I mean, yeah, I will go with moisturizer, primer, foundation, and concealer. And how did you find out about primer? Video reviews on oh, YouTube. Yeah. And what what were you searching for at the time? Just makeup in general? I I think it was searching for things like makeup routine. Okay. As a sort of a keyword because, I mean, there are videos on nearly every facet of makeup stuff, but mm -hmm. with a so-called makeup routine video, so on goes from sort of a start to finish kind of thing. And so you can get a feel for how the end result looks and how it all comes together and that kind of thing. So this one, the Smashbox Photo Finish, is quite a nice primer, but is not terribly cheap. Uh, this I one gonna, is the. I forgot to ask, how long is this bottle like that supposed to last? So this is a half ounce travel size, but yep. the full size, which is one fluid ounce, lasted me several months. Okay. Maybe right. four months or something. A little dabble do you and then do one of these? <laughs> well, I mean... And then one of these. No, that would be aftershave. Oh, right. Yeah. No. So, I mean, so typically I would uh, squeeze some onto the back of my hand and then uh, dab some just on various parts of my face. I mean, the amount you need is maybe a, like a pea size or what have you. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, Dab that around and kind of okay. rub that in. But uh, so yeah, that lasts for for quite a while. And um, a one fluid ounce size, which is double the travel size of this one, goes for about thirty dollars. A lot less than a dollar a day. Well, I mean that's part of it. But the other thing is that I mean, well, I'll put it to you this way: if you thought inkjet ink was expensive <laughs> just wait until you start buying cosmetics because yeah. it's not cheap no especially for the nice stuff at any rate so this is uh l'oreal paris and the name of this product is magic perfecting base which is a primer basically that's hmm. I, get, I don't know why they call it that anyhow so this is this is the full-size version but also happens to be half an ounce the results may not be quite as smooth as the Smashbox, but the the Smashbox that I mean, this is one you need to buy at a Sephora or a department store, what have you. A L'Oreal products you can just get in a drugstore, so there's a, some uh, convenience factor, but mm. it is also a cheaper product. This okay. is half a fluid ounce and goes for about eleven or twelve dollars. All right. Yeah. And so it's possibly not as smooth. Is it a, a difference between 95% smooth and 99% smooth, or is it a much wider range in quality? It's probably around that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it might be a 90 versus 99 or something. So Cool. I mean, they're, they're, both, they're both quite good products, but if I happen to have a bucket of cash, I'd probably buy the Smashbox. But, uh, I mean, what I generally do is just for day-to-day, -day, I might use the Magic Perfecting Base, and then for, like, weekends or special whatever, I might use the other one. Hmm. And in all honesty, can other people tell the difference? I don't know, but mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So kind of two products that work similarly. They're both primers, but one is a drugstore brand and one is not a drugstore brand. Thank you for telling me about those. I had no idea that primer existed. Yes. And it's something that, in fact, because it's often a, a, a clear application, it seems like it wouldn't do much, but it actually can help quite a bit. Awesome. I mean, part of what I should also mention that primer helps with is that 
it acts as sort of a, a shield between the oils within your skin and your makeup products so that um, your your makeup will stay on more easily and stay truer to its color and so on. So it helps in that regard as well. Thank you for sharing again with us. Absolutely. And we will talk again soon. That sounds great, Jay. Good night. <laughs>